Hello everybody, welcome to AV's Maxillofacial and Dental Talk and in this video we are going to be discussing the differences between the DPCD and the MFT1 exams. So these two are exams conducted by the prestigious Royal College and uh, let's dwell into the difference between the two exams. Now, in order to become a member of the Royal Colleges, usually you have to clear two sets of exams. One is MFD1, the other is MFD2. But with respect to Royal College of Surgeons Ireland, you have an additional option, what is known as DPCD, which stands for Diploma of the Primary Care of Dentistry. Now, apart from the DPCD, uh, if you see the other videos, you have explained about the various options to get into MFD2, which is the second part of your membership examination, which is MFD1, MFDS, and an exemption from part one for those who have the uh, postgraduate degree, which has also been made in the form of a video. Now first, see what's DPCD. So DPCD, as I mentioned earlier, stands for Diploma of the Primary Care Dentistry. Now, this is a degree by itself, meaning once you clear the examination, you will be given a degree, like meaning a certificate which you can, uh, you know, hang in your clinics or uh, frame it, add it to your CV, right next to your name, okay? On the other hand, the MFT1 is just is going to be in the form of a letter, which means you're eligible to write the part two examination. It is not a degree. It's just that in order to get your degree, you have to write the part two now. Now there is reciprocity between the other colleges, meaning if you get MFT1 from Royal College of Surgeons Ireland, that MFT1 uh, can be used to write the MFT part two of any other college. And this is... Also, the case of a vice versa, meaning if you have a MFD, the part one, if you have cleared from any other Royal College, then you can apply for the Ireland examination. Coming to the exam format, both the DPCD as well as the MFD1 examination format is pretty much similar. It is going to be a three hours exam, online exam, meaning which can be taken from your homes. You can sit in your bedrooms and write the examination and no cheating. Huh? Many people ask me these questions, no cheating at all and uh, 75 true or false questions with five statements each and 33 single best answers now what do you mean by true or false statements is like uh, you're going to have a question okay and there will be five statements now for each question you will have to mark whether the statement is true or false based on the first line for example uh, let's say they ask something about anatomy say well, which are the following structures uh, pass through the foramen ovale? Uh, the mnemonic is male, M-A, right? M-A-L-E, uh, which stands for uh, mandibular nerve, accessory meningeal artery, lesser petrosal nerve, and emissary nerves. So if these four are there in the option, you mark them as true, 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 true. And there is one other option, which is not passing through the foramen ovale. You have to mention it as false. Similarly, you're going to have 75 questions here. Now, 75 multiplied by 5 is going to give you 375 true or false questions. Meaning, uh, suppose in the first question, like I mentioned about anatomy, if you're getting only two correct and three wrong, you'll be still given a marks for those two uh, answers which you got it right. Obviously, you will not get marks for the questions which... Uh, you have uh, got it wrong and uh, there is no negative marking and suppose there is a statement which for which you do not know the answer or you are not sure of please uh, ensure you attempt all the questions because one there is no negative marking second there is a 50 percent chance that you might get the correct answer so this this is the first 75 uh, questions part of the form exams and the remaining 33 is what is known as the single best answers where you will be given a question and with four or five options and you'll have to choose one best answer and only one answer is the correct answer and that's why i said like i mentioned earlier both dpcd as well as mfd1 have the same exam from with respect however there is a mild difference with respect to the syllabus the mfd1 has 50 percent clinical and 50 percent basic sciences now the basic sciences not necessarily exactly your first uh, year and second year subjects like anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, microbiology, but some form of an applied basic sciences relevant to the clinical dentistry. Yeah, so that's how it's going to be with respect to your MFD1 examinations. 
However, with respect to DPCD, it is majority of a clinically based questions where 90% of it is going to be clinical and only 10% of it is going to be based on applied basic sciences. So again, uh, there are many who will think about whether I should take the DPCD exam, whether, whether I should take the MFD1 examination. Well, uh, the how you decide is if, the, if you're good at your clinical dentistry over your basic sciences then DPCD is the right choice or you want to have an additional degree apart from your MFD2 because you can write your DPCD and then you can write your MFD2. There is one other query which many ask is like if I write the DPCD can I write the MFD2 of any other college apart from Ireland? Well the answer is no because DPCD is exclusively uh, belonging to Ireland so you can write only that of part 2. Okay, so what are we talking about? Yes, so, so that's what the, the simple difference is between DPCD and MFT1 here. What is the exam requirement? Exam can be taken at any time following your undergraduate degree. If you are completed from your uh, BDS, then you are eligible to take up the examinations. And uh, some people are there whom I personally know, a uh, few colleagues of mine who have cleared their BDS uh, over 10 to 12 years back and still take up these examinations and they uh, wonder if uh, how will they be able to kind of recollect and refresh all whatever they studied well they definitely have to work hard and uh, they have been successful in their examinations based on their hard work also and do you have any specific limits with respect to the number of attempts uh, as far as I know there is no uh, restriction with respect to the number of attempts however if you fail even after your fourth attempt the college has every right to stop you or basically they ask you to take a break meaning in the sense like something is going wrong if you're not able to clear it even in the fourth attempt uh, uh, so it's it's based on entirely your hard work that's what i'm trying to say here and the exam frequency the exam format is online like we discussed earlier and it happens every two months okay so alternate months in a year for example if you want to have your exam in february the next exam is going to be in april then june like that in a year about six times these exams happen so to sum up the differences between mfd1 and dpcd the exam format is pretty much similar like i explained three hours 75 mcqs the true or false uh, questions are called as mcqs because they are multiple choice questions and the single best answers are called as SBAs, okay? So, so there's the SBA. So there's no difference with respect to the exam format. Will you be, will I be given a degree or certificate for MFD1? The answer is no. Will I be given a degree or certificate for DPCD? The answer is yes. And what is the eligibility criteria to write the MFD part 2 after clearing? Yes, you can write your MFD part 2 after clearing both MFT1 as well as DPCD. And if you clear MFT1, you can also write the uh, part two of other royal colleges mfds examinations syllabus basic and clinical for part one and dpcd predominantly clinical uh, this is a rough fee about 800 euros and 650 euros it might change in the future thank you so much for the patient listening in case you have any doubts feel free to contact me and like i always say if i can anybody can all the best